One of the issues for me with uh, a local music scene is sometimes that like people can be a little bit too nice and too passive. Yeah. And like, I don't support being mean sure. at all, but I think that there is, you know, there should be kind of like a place for bands that just aren't ready for a certain stage yet. Yeah. Like from an outsider perspective, right. people that aren't in bands, people that are just genuine, like attendees of an event, like things they don't look at things the way that we do. They don't have the empathy for artists that we do. Nope. Like if you're a band playing on like a big stage and you show up and like everybody looks like they're a member of a different band. Yeah. Like they're not like they don't have like the right look. They don't have the right demeanor. They don't know how to talk to the crowd. Yep. It's going to rub people the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, I know as a person, it doesn't really fucking matter if one person's wearing shorts and everybody else has jeans, no. but to somebody that is used to going to shows where they're seeing high level acts that put a lot of thought into those little details, like making yeah. sure everybody's hair looks good before they go on stage right. and you fucking go on stage and you all look like yeah. fucking like sheets employees. People are going to be like, what is this? What am I looking at? It's going to come off as like looking cheap, well, even if the band is really good. Right. So it's like, wow. I don't like support that thought. You can't change the way that the average consumer no. looks at things. And if you want to go to the next level with your band, you got to start thinking about those things and kind of come to terms with accepting the reality that like, you got to start being a little bit more vain, tapping into that ego and thinking about how normal people look at you. Even if you're not looking to take it to the next level, if you want people to come see, cause I've run into this issue and I've run into it time and time again, where People definitely, you know, players or bands, they definitely want people to come. You know what I mean? They want them to show up. But then it's like, well, why don't we do something that we know people like a little bit more? And I'm not talking, dude. I know you've dealt with them. The sensitive artist type, you ask them to change one note or one little thing they're doing. And they look at you like you tried to sacrifice their firstborn child. Sure. I'm just talking about in general. Let's consider who we want as our, as our fans. Who are we going after? And that's sort of come up with some strategy and gear what we're doing towards that. Like, okay, maybe you don't like skinny jeans. I get it. Get you all bunged up. You like some room. You'd rather mm -hmm. wear, you know, your whatever you like to wear. I don't even know, dude. But if you're not willing to look at the fact that you're trying to entertain somebody for, especially local bands playing for 45 minutes to an hour, God damn it, man. Like bands that play for an hour. All originals, no covers, and dude, like, I mean, I understand. Like, we don't, most of us, we don't get into playing music. We're not passionate about being in a fucking cover band because that's someone else's music. A lot of us, we're artists. Depends if you're a player or whether you're a creator, you know. Nothing bad about either, you know, but plenty of people who are in local bands, they're in it because they feel that they have something to share, you know. They love music. They want to be a part of it. They want to share their talent with other people, like, I don't know. I don't think you could ever explain in words why someone feels compelled to get up there and put themselves out there and pretty much expose themselves to what you were just saying, the harsh judgments of other people to share their art with the world. But if you're there to entertain people, I'm not here to fucking entertain people. All I'm here to do is do my thing. Well, God damn it. Go do it in your bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, why do you need to get up on stage? Why do you need to involve a business which is a venue, why do you need to solicit people to come see your event if you really don't give a fuck what they think you do, but your attitude tells you that you shouldn't have to, and that's where I think the entitlement comes in. Like, if you're going to play a show, you are there to entertain people, and if you're not, do not bother. That doesn't mean you get up there and you're a fucking cheerleader and you try and be somebody you're not, you know, um, or play a bunch of music that you hate because that's the most common misconception is, oh, if I'm working with a producer or if I want a commercial sound or if I want this or want that. Any little thing that goes towards polishing your shit up and letting someone else come into your project and and help you, it's always some guy in a fucking suit that's trying to turn me into something I'm not. And it's like, bro, 
are you signed? Like, is there a $250,000 contract involved? Well, then trust me. No one's sitting there trying to get you to play music that you don't want to play. They're probably just trying to help you sound a little bit better, and you've got an attitude about it. Like, yeah. Unless there's a record contract where the label is paying a producer, and they're saying, we want them to sound like this, and we're going after this demographic, then it's a different story. But like in a local project, if you involve someone who knows how to do something and they make some helpful suggestions, trust me, they're not trying to turn you into NSYNC because they have no there's no agenda there like what the fuck does it benefit them we just I think a lot of us came up with certain misconceptions like I don't know about you but I know I used to think that a lot of professional bands who were in like legit sign bands and were working with labels it was all about like well now the guy in the suit with the cigar comes out Tells them exactly how to dress, tells them exactly what to play, tells them exactly what to write. You know what? If fucking A&R people and record people could do that, they wouldn't need musicians and artists because we're a huge fucking pain in the ass. Like a lot of us like to do drugs. We're unruly and like we're just a pain in the ass. Like artists are a fucking pain in the ass. Like we typically are. We're very nice people. We're empathetic. Some of us without the ego. But we tend to be difficult to work with because we've all got this vision, you know what I mean? If they could just take a bunch of puppets and dress them up and and put them through, you know, training and, and and teach them about music theory and teach them how to play their instrument, if they could literally just craft that from the top up and just say this is our product, all we need is someone who's basically like an actor who can play music. They would just do that. Well, I mean, they that, wouldn't put up with us. I mean, that does happen. It does, but how far does it go? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, it happens, and I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. It's just a different. It's almost like, you know, a producer is like, like a like a director of a movie. Yeah. And like you know, this producer has a story, and they just need to find actors to fill the role. Yeah. You know, and that has happened with bands in the past. I'm sure. It and has. it's it's I a different thing. I don't think it's happening in our genre quite as much though. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe in like the the eighties or the nineties, I'm sure there was like people that tried to assemble like grunge bands, people that tried to assemble hair metal bands. Yeah. I mean people, we've all seen the gimmick band Rika too. I just don't think that it happens that much anymore yeah. because there's such a wider pool of distribution thanks to the internet sure it's really flipped the script of everything and like anybody can make themselves look like a professional band now right you couldn't really do that in the 80s or 90s you didn't have the fucking tools to do it yeah but the other thing too is like a lot of us playing in local projects if you're not in a position where you can tour we have to in my opinion you got to get square with the idea somehow that if you cannot go out and tour, I'm going to say like it's probably like 97, 98% chance you're only going to be able to amass so big an audience. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, if you can't go out and tour, I would say, you know, if you want to be a band that is, uh, there's anomalies, you know, that make it huge on the internet. Sure. There's a band like like bands like Spirit Box. I love I love that band to fucking death. Yeah, they're finally um, do. And you know, they're just more focused on like cre- like writing really really good songs, yeah. pushing hard on digital content, yeah. putting up cool music videos, sure. doing cool in studio stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure they'll tour whenever they need to. Yeah. But it's just a matter of like they're a really fucking good band. And they don't have the capability to maybe tour in the way that they want to right now. Yeah. But they're putting out good shit and they're using the internet in a very smart way. And I think that's what a lot of us should be looking at as local artists. And that's honestly, that's where my head's at. You know what I mean? I got a job like I can't. I could, but I'm not just going to walk away from my job and go live in a van for six to eight weeks and be like, well, we're all going to jump out of a plane together with no parachute on. It's like, dude, when I was 20, 25, even going into my 30s, like I was in a position to do that. I'm no longer in a position to do that. So like, and I think that's where a lot of individuals get jaded with their project and with just music in general and the whole scene. You know, how many times is it some, sometimes it's some young punk, but a lot of times if someone's really bashing the scene. You look at them, they're in their forties. They never really got to where they felt like they could have gotten to like they're just fucking bitter but yeah as we get older if you haven't rocketed to stardom and found your way into a touring project where your dream came true like what do you do do you just give up and quit like we have to learn to adapt and re like me personally i had to reevaluate. and this is hard stuff to talk about you know what i mean like i mean how many people wouldn't like to be in a serious touring band 
maybe it's not about fame or maybe it's not even about money. Just having an audience where thousands, maybe even millions of people listen to your art. I mean, yeah. come on now, I'll be pretty fucking you, cool. Yeah, you got <laughs> you got to use the internet. That's the I yeah. don't I don't think that like any band that isn't well known already. Can, I don't see the point of touring right now. 